Uh, yeah, obviously, Curtin, uh, Goodsy aren't available this week, and, and we expect at this point we expect uh, Kieran to train on Thursday and play this week. So um, you know, he's he's he ran really hard, did a hard session with us on Friday, and uh, we expect him to be able to get through training this week and, and play this week. So you're looking to bounce back pretty strongly against the Pies. Uh, yeah, we are. Obviously, I mean, we we went through a period of uh, of looking at the at the game and our clearance work and our stoppage work and our um, our contested ball when the game was up for grabs in the last quarter really fell away so we need to we, we addressed that last week but obviously with a two week break it um, you, you need to get onto Collingwood and and they've been in a similar boat I guess in some ways so um, you know that means that the the pressure's on as far as trying to win that contested ball in a 50-50 situation and then really hard running both ways that's what um, if you look at the games that have been played out to to now, that's what wins games of footy. Nothing's changed. You've signed on for another two years. <laughs> <laughs> was was that a hard decision to make? So that's a long period, isn't it? Uh, no, it wasn't a hard decision to make. It's something that uh, I'm I'm really pleased with this football club as far as um, um, the, the administration, the support from the board right through. We've got an outstanding group of people here and and the, the playing group led by Kieran Jack and Jerry McVeigh are, are really strong people and, and uh, it gives you great confidence to be able to, to, to look for the, the immediate term, which is uh, right now this week, but also for a bit longer than that and being able to be able to make those decisions based upon the medium and longer term as well. John, a lot of people are coming out and saying that uh, the signing of Buddy is a threat to the Swans culture. What's your response to that? Uh, I was um, concerned about the th the uh, contested ball count last week. That was my concern. I mean, I uh, we're very well led by Kieran Jack and Jared McVeigh. We've got Adam Goods, uh, Ryan O'Keefe, Rhys Shaw, um, Nick Smith. Um, we've got uh, Benny McGlynn, a number of really strong leaders of this footy club, and. Um, we're just focusing on making sure we turn our performance around from last week. I but mean, that, we that aside, I mean, there, there are a lot of you know scathing comments from certain sectors about Buddy. What, what are your response to those? Well, it's not actually that aside. It's that's what we we, we do as a football club is is concentrate on that. I mean. Lance is a player that's played nine seasons at Hawthorne is, and um, sure is, uh, is knows what being a successful player is and being part of a successful club is. And that's what we know and that's what he'll concentrate on here as well. And um, he wasn't our concern really last week after, in the, after the GWS loss. We were a bit more concerned about what happened further up the ground. Just a quick one, you've got a couple of milestones, Nick Smith and uh, Josh Kennedy. Would they yeah. be among your sort of more consistent performers, those two? Yeah, they have been. I mean, Nick Smith's a player who's come off the rookie list and when he first turned up at this footy club was probably wondering how he'd go and how he'd survive AFL footy and he's been able to do it uh, playing on some of the best small forwards in the competition. It's a real credit to how he's gone. Uh, and, and Josh Kennedy's been one of our most, if not our most consistent performer over the last four years. So he's a player who's really thrived uh, with the extra responsibility and and is one of the best clearance contested ball players in the competition. They're both um, great members of our leadership group and they both drive us really strongly on and off the field. And sure. um, Ruck, did, did LRT hurt himself last week? Uh, uh, yeah, he, he got subbed. His groin was a bit sore right. um, and he got a scan. There's no muscle damage. So we'll have to see how he trains on, on Thursday. Um, we'll see how he goes mm. this week at training, but there was no muscle damage as such, so that's mm. a good sign, but he's just got to, he's got to get through contested training on Thursday, so we're hopeful that he'll play, we don't know just yet though. Was that one of the things that concerned you coming out of the game, the performance of your Ruckman? Uh, oh, it was probably, uh, if you, it was probably just a ground level that we, we weren't great at, we weren't great at ground level, it was probably the, the bigger concern for us, we didn't um, get our clearance work right, we didn't get our contested ball right and our spread right at ground level, so that was probably the bigger concern to come out of the game. I think Pikey played about 97% of the game, I mean, are you looking at a Derricks or someone like that sort of firmly in the mix? Oh, yeah, I mean he'll come into it, I mean it just it depends upon how Louis goes this week at training, so uh, we'll certainly discuss Derricks as we will a number of players that played in our reserves who had a good hit out, so we'll discuss a few of those players and, and see what happens this week. Derricks is one op one player that provides himself with an opportunity this week, but also, you know, once again, if Lewis trains well and uh, and gets through training on, on Thursday, he'd be a massive chance. Does Kurt come into thinking down the track of in the rough? Oh, he will. At, at yeah. some point, yeah. at some point he will. It's just trying to get him out there and um, and get him on the, on the park playing first and foremost, and then... Um, can he ruck? Absolutely, he can ruck. Yeah. Was there a team from the first round that really surprised you? No, I think that uh, I think if you look at West Coast performance, it was really strong uh, again yesterday. That, which 
doesn't surprise you, but it just underlines how tough the competition is when they come out and play as well as what they did. They're, they've had a really good pre-season, they're fit, most of their players are available and um, they're really hard to beat at home. So that sort of underlines really how tough the competition is. Collingwood have been a bit of a bogey side for you in the last couple of years. Does that play on your mind at all coming into this game? No, it doesn't. I mean, we've, um, we had a, we've had a couple of good wins against Collingwood and they've had a couple of good wins in, in recent times. So it's, we look at, rather than the last uh, 10 or 15 years, we look a little bit shorter than that the last couple of years and it's, it's been a bit closer than that. And, both teams have had good wins against each other and they'll be getting some good players back this week as well, we'd expect, so um, that's our challenge to try and make sure that um, you know, we played our maximum to beat a very good Collingwood outfit on the rebound as well. Good, he didn't damage his rotator cuff or anything throwing that first pitch the other night. <laughs> uh, he said he should have taken his suit off because he was a bit worried about ripping under the arm of his <laughs> suit and um, I, th I think he's got a bit of a custard arm goodsy, so I don't think it was that. He ex he's claiming it would have been a strike. Um, but from what I've heard from people that saw it, said it was um, a bit of a lollipop. So, um, no, he's, he's, I think Stick his arms footy. are right. Stick to footy, yeah.